So uh, Thanksgiving is something that we embrace as a country, but also something we, we long for for other places in this world where people seek to be free. And as you've already heard of that remarkable reading by Eddie and Kelly, that Thanksgiving is that celebration of national origins for that small company, small company of men and women and children who landed on Plymouth Rock and laid a foundation for a new nation and a foundation for a new faith community. It's hand in hand with what we are about as a land. A new faith community in this new and free land. Well, it, it wasn't just congregational pilgrims on the Mayflower. History reveals that there were actually two strains of, of immigrants that made up this melting plot of what we call America. Some obviously came because they wanted a better life. They wanted a place for opportunity. And who can blame them? But that other group, making a larger and perhaps more creative contribution were those who came here for reasons of faith. The Puritans, the Mennonites, the Moravians, and the Amish, and others. They desired a better country, not only a life without poverty, but also a life without fear, a life wherein they could be free to love God and to serve God according to their personal conscience, not the dictates of another person. So at Thanksgiving, this annual time, we see God and what God does in our lives, perhaps a little more clearly than we normally do. And this is also the message we find in the scriptures, that everything around us, everything we are, and everything that we have essentially comes to us by way as a gift of God. They remind us that the gifts of God, that they're also given to us through others, some who are known to us and some who will always remain unknown to us, but they will be those nameless servants of God's grace, people who rolled up their sleeves and to help make a difference together. Jesus knew what it was to live in thankfulness and to live in gratitude. I think it is helpful to underscore and to remember that Jesus was raised in a Jewish household. That was the center of his understanding of faith. And every devout Jewish person was devoted to two particular daily forms of prayer that undoubtedly were a part of Jesus' devotional life. One prayer is known as the Shema, and that is from the book of Deuter Deuteronomy, beginning with chapter 6, verse 4. And the Shema, they would recite that over and over again, those beginning words, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord, and you've heard this before in the New Testament, with all your heart, with all your soul, 
and with all your strength. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. They would pray that prayer, the Shema, every day. And there was another daily prayer that was called, it has various names, is also known as the 18 benedictions or the Amidah. Now, in Hebrew, the word benediction was any prayer that would begin with the word bless. We think of benediction at the end of the worship service where we say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. So wherever that word bless was used, it was a benediction. Their favorite saying was always to speak good, to bless and to thank God. And they would say the prayer of the Amish in the morning when they woke up. They would say that prayer, blessed are you God at night before they went to bed. And they would pray, blessed are you God in the middle of the day. And then there would be times throughout the day where they would pause after that blessing and they would pray, blessed are you, Lord, who abundantly forgives. Then you would find in the Shema, they would expand on that. Blessed are you, Lord, who heals the sick. Or another part of the 18, blessed are you who sustains the living and raises the dead. And so every day, it would be the prayer of that blessing. It essentially... In the Jewish faith, they were training themselves for the spirit of gratitude, of realizing all that God had done in their lives. We also find that carrying over into the New Testament. We find in the writings of the Apostle Paul where he wrote to the Philippians, Corinthians, he said this, or the Philippians, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. For the Lord is near. And don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and what? Thanksgiving. Present your requests. To God. Paul was so grateful to God for what Christ had done for him, and that is endeavored in all ways that God had blessed his life in his ministry. So here we are today, and there is an opportunity before us that we can continue what was front and center in the Old and the New Testaments to be a thankful people, to be a thankful community. So, do me a favor. Be thankful. Be thankful, maybe to begin with, when you don't know something. That is cause for thankfulness because when we are thankful for that, it is also an opportunity that we have to learn something. We have a saying around here, we say, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. That means when you don't learn anymore. Be also thankful in difficult times. Because it is in the difficult times that we're able to grow. When there's the challenge, when we allow our faith to be at the front burner, be thankful when there's difficulty because there's that aspect to stretch. Be thankful for your limitations. Because what does that do? It provides an opportunity for improvement, to expand, to learn, to grow. Be thankful for each new challenge because in our thankfulness, when there is that challenge, it is an opportunity to build strength and to build character. And believe it or not, I think we should also be thankful when we blow it, when we make mistakes. We do. And the good news about that, we're able to learn a valuable lesson. That doesn't work. Let's not do that again. Be thankful 
when you're tired and you're worn out because it means you worked hard and you're making a difference. Well, I'm thankful for all of those things. But I'm also thankful, and I want to encourage you to join me, to be thankful for what I call the faith-driven actions of others. Without those faith-driven actions of others, where would we be? Think of it this way. I, I'm thankful that Kostya didn't say, I don't do videos or dress like Santa Claus, because we were blessed a little bit by it. I like how artistic people can, can stretch out of their bubble. I am glad that Michelangelo didn't say, I don't do ceilings. <laughs> what would have happened? And I am, um, if you carry that through, I'm thankful that Noah didn't say, I don't do boats. What would have happened? It was never in his paradigm to do that. I'm thankful, and I know you are, that David didn't say, I, I, I don't do Goliaths. I'm just, I'm just a small kid. I don't do that kind of thing. I'm thankful that John the Baptist didn't say, I don't do baptisms. I can't even swim. And I'm thankful that Peter didn't say, I don't do Gentiles. This is just a Jewish thing. I'm thankful that the Apostle Paul didn't say, I don't do letters. And I am ultimately thankful, and I know you are, that Jesus didn't say, I don't do crosses. I don't do crosses. That spirit of thankfulness of how God has blessed this country and how of all persons on the face of the earth, to, to be able to encourage and develop that spirit of thankfulness and intertwine that in our prayers as we are guided in the scriptures allows us to truly be a blessed people, a blessed community. Now we can pick and choose each day what we're going to focus our attention on and how the rough it is, but I think even in the rough stuff, there's a room for thankfulness and challenge. I'm thankful for you as a congregation for all the faithful that you have done that continues to, to allow this ministry to strengthen its reach to others, to generate the thankful spirit that we have been blessed with in so many ways. Let us continue that as we watch the football game, as we take care of the turkey, as we get with family and friends, as we pray for places in this world where there's war, to be thankful for the peace that we have and the opportunities that we have as many who have done before us who realize whatever it takes, I'll do it. I'll work together so that God's best can continue to be realized in our community. And in doing so, we truly are blessed. Let us pray. O kind and gracious God, we offer you our thanks and praise for the endless blessings you have bestowed upon us, you have given us the privilege of living in a land of abundance. Move us to take time to recount our gifts again this week. Lead us to recognize and acknowledge ours is a boundless love. We thank you for the gifts of food, clothing, and shelter, and everything else that you have supplied. But especially do we thank you for the Christ. Bless us and keep us for his namesake, for it is in his name we pray and are thankful.